Good day, my name is Rick Deering, Borgo Service Rep. Today we're going to be function testing a 7000 series air seeder with an X30 Apollo tank. This unit is equipped with the out granular or liquid slash NH3 section control. It's a standard unit. First of all, we're going to set up some stuff in the X30. When you're hooking up the wiring and so on and such in the cab, the best resource we find to use is the wiring diagram outlined in the operator's manual provided by Borgo Industries. We have a very good diagram showing you how everything is connected and descriptions of each item. So there's a power button on the rear left side of the monitor. I'm just going to press and hold it for a few seconds then it'll power cycle on. We'll notice the flashing lights across the top. So we're going to wait for it to load. It brought us to the operating page of the X30 and now it's going to configure to the ECUs on the tank. Each tank, depending on the options that were ordered with the tank, will have a different number of ECUs. It'll have from one to four ECUs. Any alarms that show up, show up as an orange warning on the top. We're not connected to guidance, GPS, so it came up with a no GPS warning. The green synchronizing ECUs means that it's finding the tank and as soon as it finds a tank it'll have all of the software firmware versions in it. Okay. If I touch on the Borgo icon top left corner it brings up a mini view with our Borgo software version of 3.18.503 BG. If I drag this to the right so I press it in the center, drag it to the right. Now I can, at the top of the page, view that same software version and slide it down and view the firmware versions of the ECUs. The cart we're testing today has three ECUs. First we're gonna go to setup. The setup should have been done previously, but there's a few things in here we should check to ensure you're checking all of the options on that tank. I'm going to go to user, region, units, ensure our units are imperial, latitude, longitude, um, pressure units, default PSI, short distance in inches, area units in defaults acre counter. A dry product volume in bushels, dry density, how we calibrate in pounds per cubic foot, and liquid product units in gallons, and application rate type fixed. Next, we're going to skip quite a bit of this and go over to implement, and then we're going to touch on the select folder. You notice there's a number of units in our test X30. Your X30 should have no more than two in there. The unit you're using and possibly a second test unit. But ours we have with the green check mark is a 7700 5 tank metering with section control, a 3320 76 foot on 10 inch spacing with granular section control and it is a high float drill. That's the beauty of hooking up and using a Borgo air seeder coupled to a Borgo implement. Once you make a lot of these selections, a lot of these customized settings are done for you. Okay. Next we're going to go over to our geometry. And with the section control unit, you're going to have a general setting that's full width. And then we're going to have our full width boom in inches. Again, it's a Borgo 3320, so it knows how many inches that is. It knows our depth here. And I could change that number if I needed to there. 
When I go over to the second boom, that's our granular section control boom, and if I try to enter widths there, it won't let me do that. It knows that I have to go over to section control, and touch on the sections, and enter my implement widths there. Again, we've got a Borgo unit, so it knows the width of each section. If you had a competitor's drill, you'd have to enter those units here. Timing. With the new software, Apollo Tanks, we have the ability to adjust sequence timing per section. Last year's section control units, it was one unit. Sequence timings was the same for the whole drill. Now it's adjusted per section. I've put in a couple unit numbers in there, typical to what you might see on a larger drill like this. We have a procedure on the website that's very in-depth on how to check those sequence timings. It's a necessary um, thing to do at the start of the year to get those sequence timings right on so you don't have any misses and or too much overlap. The outer wings will have a bigger number on the odd time than the mainframe. Mainframe's in the middle. Same thing, your off time. Take a little longer to clean those lines out on the longer hoses than it will on the mainframe. So be very careful when you're setting your sequence timings and follow the procedure on the website. Our section switch, we have virtual switch box. We want to have that enabled. So we have switch boxes on our operating screens. If we go down to number one, it's just our switches are labeled one through eight. This is an eight board primary and we have eight switches on that. If we move over to our operator inputs, we're going to skip over to the keypad. We can customize our in-cab keypad to do a few different functions. Um, we can customize buttons A, B, and C. A, B, and C. They don't have to be customized or used, but we're going to set them up just to test a few different functions. I've set up A to increase tank rate, B to decrease tank rate, and C, I can have it fill all the tanks or prime the augers. We'll just set it to fill all the tanks for now. Next, we can switch over to the master switch. <coughs> New with the software this year, we can turn the master on and off with the keypad or the touch screen. It doesn't have to be an either or. There is a secondary master input on the implement switch. If you want to use the auto clutch relay, you could have that highlighted. For test purposes, we're going to leave it off for today. Next, we're going to go over to the cedar page, up to the granular, up to the tank. We'll go up to tank the general settings, tank name, time to ground, off time. You can use guidance to turn it on and off the air seeder at the headlands on covered ground within a field boundary and we can adjust the amount of time it takes for the product to get to those openers here. Preload time, we're going to set that to five seconds and fan speed to start, the factory setting is 1000 RPM. Because we're inside operating today, I'm going to just set that to zero so we can run the system without having the fan running. We're going to move over to drive setup and go down to one. Here's where you want to verify that each tank selected has the appropriate metering auger. On the right hand side of the metering auger on the drive side, there's a stamp on the end of the auger that'll say um, 1X, 2X, HO, and LO, corresponding high output, single flight, double flight, and low output. Make sure it has the appropriate auger. 
They always have a minimum shaft RPM of 10 and a maximum of 1000 and they'll always be proportional drive. You should simply have to verify if you've selected the appropriate model. These numbers will be auto populated for you other than the metering auger type. Next we're going to go over to the controller setup. And these settings, no matter which auger you're working off, are the same. They're all going to be minimum PWM 15, maximum 95, controller response medium fast. <clears throat> On the general settings, I can simply select use the settings from tank 1 because we know tank 1 is set properly, then I know they're all set properly. We're going to go into accessories. If the unit's equipped with blockage, there will be another ECU on the drill. We're simply testing the tank today, but I will show you here how to enable it. Blocked head monitoring is enabled. We give it names here at the factory. Leave your settings like they are right there. You can enable it or disable it. I'll leave it enabled right now to show you what it looks like on the front screen. Finally, we're going to go over to the speed source. Speed source we have as GPS as our primary speed source. It's the most accurate speed source. These large tires tend to deflect a lot as loaded to empty, making it an inaccurate wheel speed sensor. It's wise to have a fallback of a manual speed. In case you lose GPS speed, you'll continue proceeding to what speed you set it at. Now we're going to move over to our product, up to granular. And we have to have some products in here to test. We've got wheat. Our wheat has a bump up and down increment of 5 pounds an acre. For testing, I'll put it at 10. It has a pre primary rate of 100. And I'm going to put a fictitious high rate for my preset 2 to make sure that the augers will go up fairly high. So I'll put 350 pounds. Then I need to have another product for our small tanks. We'll go to new product. Brings us to this wizard. And we're going to pull from a Borgo list. That's the yellow arrow and we'll select something like canola canola product name canola is good and okay to save it increments we'll have a pound increment good enough for now preset rate of five and we'll put a secondary rate of something to show the speed change. That's all we really have to do in the setup to do our functional tests. Okay, now we'll touch on the running man in the lower left hand corner of the screen and go back to our operating page. <clears throat> 